Hi, it's Lil from Made by Marley and today I'm going to be starting painting this piece outside because it's a beautiful day and there's going to be a lot of blending and water and mess. So until we get to the designy parts, it'll, we'll take it back to the studio then. But before we start, I just want you just to see this. It's an absolutely gorgeous vintage wardrobe. I will, however, be taking out the glass. Um, I'm going for a sort of layered journal effect paint job on this and a, the, the more real estate I have to paint on the better and I'm actually going to be turning it into a more when it's a wardrobe it can only be a wardrobe I'm going to get Martin to put three shelves in it and that means it could be a linen cupboard a kitchen cupboard a hall cupboard different storage and it's got lots of different uses as opposed to one use which is a wardrobe so um, this is the inside as it currently is so Martin will be removing these two um, hangers and putting me three shelves into it, which I will probably paint. Um, he's going to take this back panel off and remove the glass and just put the black panel back on just so I've got a panel to work on. But this is it. It needs a good clean, um, a good scrub down and then these modifications done and then we'll get to painting. So all the work's been done. The shelves are inside and the glass has been taken away. Um, the glass made it look more like a wardrobe and I'm trying to turn it into a cupboard and I guess it depends what your market will kind of take but I'm more likely to sell this as a cupboard which could be used in a kitchen or what have you so the mirror's gone and that gives me the real estate of here and here to do the design work on. Before we start anything I'm using um, chalk paint today, Annie Sloan's chalk paint and I have Capri Pink, a Busson Blue, Furl, um, oh, I've forgotten what this one is uh, Old Violet and I've got a tiny little bit I don't even know if there's that much in it of um, Napoleonic Blue and I'm going to do not a blendy with no, no seams I want I want mishmash of colours where I'm kind of like using the blues and I'm starting to use some pinks as well but I've just got a wet brush my brush is wet to start with I have a water mister and the reason why I'm doing out this is because there's going to be quite a lot of paint thrown at this before we even take it over at the studio so I'm just going to get on and do it so um, let's start with the Abusson Blue so let's get some of this on here uh, I'm just going to be doing one coat there's going to be so much going on to this that it doesn't need two solid coats I don't mind if some of the wood shows through so we can, I'm not particularly going for symmetrical here I'm just going for what I think is going to work. I'm going to run that into, into the edges here and here and up in here. Um, then I'm going to start working with some of the pink and I'm just going to swap my brush over and I'm just going to go in with the pink now. That'll kind of make a sort of purpley colour here. I want it kind of more pink in the centre. Now there's more colours going over the top of this. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, I, I tell you what, what was the inspiration. I was looking online at people who journal and last night I sat and I watched video after video of these women who know how to put texture on, who stamp, they stencil, they use all sorts of different things to make really funky backgrounds. And I thought, this is what I need. This is the kind of background I'm looking for. And that was the reason I went looking for it. So all I'm doing is I'm just mixing my colours. I think what I'll do here is I'm going to add a little bit of water just to help my brush run because it's a very hot day in Scotland and it's quite windy, which means my paint's going to dry quite... I'm wanting lots of texture, so don't worry about your brush strokes. And as I said, don't worry about full coverage. There's going to be so much happening to this that it's not, not really the end of the world. So I'm going to put a little bit, I think, of some furrow onto it now. Not too much. Um, I think maybe up here, because that will blend nice into the Abusum Blue. get some water onto this. This furl is near the end of the tin and look how thick it is. So it's going to give me quite a lot of nice 
sort of texture. So I'm just going to put it on quite thick and then we'll just water it in. I'm probably going to go back to my, my pink brush for this. So you can see I'm adding quite a lot of water and I'm rubbing that yellow up. Well, it's turning into a yellow, but it, we know it was the green. I'm just going to change my brush. So as I said, I'm not looking for smooth transitions. I'm just looking to blend it in and have interest. Now I'm going to go on and mix these two colours. The last sort of colour you're going to see me add on, and I'll just do it now so you can see, is the old violet. So let's stick some of that here. And it's just going to lighten the whole thing up. I'm not too worried that this is kind of pink up here because quite a lot of our main interest is going to be here and here. So we're kind of setting up the panels to make it look My paint's quite lumpy, that pink. They could be pink, but that's okay. And I'm painting this because it's one of those um, things that has the catch on it and it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go on and I'm actually just gonna, I mean, if you want to see me just do blending, just leave me a message and I'll do one on purely just blending, like proper blending where there's no transitions and it just always seems like it runs into one or more of a, a sort of bohemian sort of blend, either or. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not really kind of, there's no sort of rhyme or reason here. I think I want a little bit more of this here. I'm just kind of building it up. Yeah, adding plenty of water to make sure that it, um, that my paintbrush doesn't stick. Okay. Because my furrow is so thick, it literally is like putty. I quite like this texture here that's been left. So I think I'm just going to do something like, it's so thick that, and some of this is all going to get kind of maybe covered up, but we'll, we'll aim that we can try and keep some of this in. It's very thick. Look at that texture. <laughs> lumpy. So I've got like a flash bottle here, you know the, the type you get cleaner out, it's been thoroughly washed out and this is self-leveling paint. Normally I would put chalk paint in here so we'll have to see if it works and it was a colour I mixed up for, you know, the green piece with the ravens and I had that remainder so I just put it in a little bottle. So I've filled it, not with a huge amount of water and um, let's hope that, give it a good shake. I just want to spit on the ground first till see right so uh, this is where it gets a little bit crazy I 
wipe that in a minute with I've got some water here and a wallpaper brush and we'll give that a wee bit of a as you in there I want some drips so what did I do with my not water this is a mister so you just gonna get some drips coming down here this is okay if it takes the paint away from underneath we're okay with this I just want to put a little bit more of this I don't want the green to overpower it but if you stand back like this you're just getting a fine spray if you stand close you're getting a whole line so it's you know you can decide what it's quite windy in Scotland so I'm probably gonna look like the Hulk by the time this is done um, <laughs> actually Matt is gonna be green I think so I'm just gonna go on and I'm just do, gonna do the same things pretty much with the sides any bits that I'm not in love with I'm just gonna brush with my um, with my this gives it good texture so you're really looking for things that are gonna you know like bring out quite quite a lot of the texture we want sort of runny drippy it kind of like water so if I do this and squish that on and I do this to see what's happening it's just it's it's kind of diluting the drips and making them run so you can just whoop, that's a little bit much there just spread it around a bit this is art we're making art today we're layering not the Indian kind of layering where I do all the sort of ethnic stamps and everything that's a different kind of and quite a lot of people recently have asked me on my socials if I can do this technique and I will do it it's just that this one is actually a video about <laughs> using up all your inlays from IOD how many pieces and parts do you have left over if you don't have inlays you can use stamps the same process and I'm going to be using some tracing paper and some stamps and just things like that to make a piece of art I think that's probably right what color could I do next same process with some pink and again this is a uh, self-leveling this was a tub of paint that fell off the top of my cupboard in the studio and I tried to salvage it so it wasn't something I could put on a good piece but um, just in case there was lumps in it but well it wouldn't matter on this I guess so I'll just spray it first on the ground right so now we're going with light pink in the sides and I'll just do this side this is why I said this was an outdoory one today until <laughs> uh, my lovely white whitewash studio uh, walls in the stable would have been bombarded now there is more to come on this, believe it or not. Many, many more layers. This is just our, our base layer, really. I'm going to let this dry, have my lunch, and then we will endeavour to start putting some stencils on it first. We're going to go stencils, then we're going to go stamps, then we're going to go inlays, and it's just all going to... Now, how am I going to apply my inlays? I'm going to play, apply my inlays with... Um, had brain freeze lacquer so when I apply my inlays I'm going to be applying my inlays with lacquer because you want a see-through surface so that you can see all this behind it um, so we don't need to worry about layering paint embedding the the inlays etc we'll do all that as we go along as we build all our layers of texture my vision for this although it seems very far away from it right now is going to be a big huge vase of flowers, big straight vase of flowers here. And I'm gonna make them have detail with the indigo um, violet transfer. And up here, and when we get over to the stable, I'll show you, I have got the peony stamp, 
because why not? Because I use it in just about everything. I've stamped it onto tissue paper because I want to be able to bend it round here. Um, so I've did it on tissue paper today because that's what the scrapbookers do. That the journalists, I've watched them last night. That's how they get into the joins and things. I thought I'm going to try that. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to try and make our paint quite opaque. I don't know how we're going to do that. Maybe because uh, I don't have any glazing medium, and that would be the normal thing you would go to for that. But we'll see, so that I can paint those in, and then we've got lettering and as i said stenciling and stamping and so at the end of it all it should just be like a ho ho okay so but we'll let this dry just now now i'm not sure how much of these stencils is going to be covered up with other things but now what i'm doing is um i've just got some lighter blue on my brush and i'm just going along it just putting some extra interest into it i do want to roll or some um some paint onto this so um some of this might disappear um but i'm just kind of turning my stencil this way and i'm not even going in through it all it's just a suggestion that it's been there i'm just kind of do something like that there and then what i'll do is i'll use the whole piece here i'm just kind of getting the paint on the brush so i really want to take it in as far as here really and again I'm not, that's why I'm using this kind of brush. I'm not looking for perf perfection. I'm just looking to give a little bit of contrast like this. I'm gonna go all over the whole piece. Martin will show you the sides. I've already done that. Um, so I'm just gonna go over this whole middle panel, just this middle panel and these sides and these sides but not this bottom panel there's going to be enough going on there I think it's getting really hot out here uh, one last layer of paint um, before we get started um, I've just got I mean it's just on a lid I wasn't going to show you that but um, I've got a little roller here and I'm just going to give it a sort of uh, kind of frame just kind of ground it a little bit more at the moment i feel i'm looking at this and it looks a little bit like some sort of magician's cabinet and i have painted one of those before but uh, that's not was not kind of my intent when i when i started to do this a roller will give you different texture than a paintbrush will so if you have one use it if not you could use a palette knife and i don't mind that i'm going back over some of this uh, um, stenciling i've done that's the sort of layered look that i'm kind of going for um, so this is all I'm doing now. I'm just picking areas out that I, I think I'm wanting to have quite a dark patch here. You might have to use your roller lots of different ways to get what you're looking for. Um, something like that, I think, for me. Maybe some of this edge. So I'm just going to, you know, you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not really particularly being too precise. I'm just kind of starting to kind of ground it a little bit more, give it more kind of depth really before we start layering up on top of it. I already feel that's kind of taken away that sort of sparkly, sort of pinky sort of sparkle that I wasn't enjoying too much. So I'm just going to kind of do that. I'm still leaving this panel and this panel just now because that's where the artwork's going to go. Okay. With the keep capri pink, I want to have a base to put my inlays on and I'm looking for a long, tall vase. So I'm wondering whether I should have it, I don't want it centered, so I really feel it should be off to this side here. So I'm just gonna paint it in. It's just enough that my, the indigo floral um, inlay will show up on. So we're just gonna, my paint is incredibly thick. Give it a wee squish, see that. You can see it's got tons of texture, but we're, we'll work with that. I don't mind if you can see um, the paint colour through it. I just need enough that when I put the indigo florals on that it'll um, show up. And it's a little bit sort of busy for that right now. So probably just that, a big long sort of tall all vase like this now we're going for a sort of kind of modern art feel and i will sort all this and tidy up all the edges and do all that when i get over to the shed all the design stuff's going to be good done over in the shed i'm just doing all the the wet paint work right now that can dry neat lovely and fast in this lovely scottish sunshine so that's all i'm doing here i think we maybe kind of do something like that 
I didn't want it touching this edge, but it is now. Yeah, I'm going to give it a wee. I'm kind of running out of water, so it's just. That's all I'm going to do here because that's just enough for me to have my vase here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with this this colour that I used for the edging. I've got a really rough brush that's been drying in the sun, so I'm just going to do something like this. I'm just going to run it along here. It's just as much interest. Think modern art and think as many textures as you can put on this piece, do it. Probably enough, I don't want to go crazy. Just something like that. And the top, I'm going to do something like this up the top here just to frame out this as well. I should have maybe did this before to see if coming back and showing you, but I wasn't. I was still kind of, although I've got the design in mind, I just stay. Uh, now my flowers are going to probably come up a little bit here and over here so we want to frame this section here out and you can see really rough this brush is nice and hard it's got chalk paint on it it just didn't manage to get in and get water so something like that over the top of the other texture like this now this is the stage where you're all horrified and wet <laughs> but you don't need, but you don't need to be horrified i promise you it will all come together and you'll think you know I should have stuck with that there. So if you're watching my channel for the first time, please don't just go away. In fact, if you're watching, subscribe. But but if you come on at this part, don't think, oh no, this is she's rubbish. This is actually going to work out just fine. Okay? So we're back in the studio and the place is completely dry, which is brilliant because things take ages to dry in the stable. I'm in, the, in fact, I'm actually, even though we live in Scotland, I'm and we love the sun when it comes. It's actually so hot out there. It's actually nice being in here now, so I'm quite happy. So everybody who, if you've, if you've used inlays from IOD before, you have leftover pieces and parts. Now I'd like to say at this point, don't switch off if you don't have any inlays because you can do exactly the same thing as I've done so far, just with some stamps. Now I have all these pieces. They're, they're tiny, some of them are really big, some of them are small, but there's, there's I have um, some Paradise, I indigo floral, um, the flowery one, and Giselle Toile, some of these parts as well. So I have, I'm left over with all these little parts. These are all not even had their first use. I do have this part here, which is the bottom of um, the Queen of the Nile. Uh, which I think I'm going to try and apply here. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll, 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 I thought that would be quite nice here beside our vase. But I happen to have, now this is why I kind of did this sort of size. I happen to have two, I think obviously I'd cut these for drawers and didn't need them. So I'm going to apply these onto here for the start off now. If you've never done this before, if you've applied inlays, but you've never done it, on top of your paint job then this is how you do it you just get your um well I, i'm using lacquer um and it works with lacquer and um, but you can use a top coat and you can just apply them so i'm just being kind of rough and ready um make sure like you would do with paint make sure you've got quite a, a good coating of it don't be too don't be too liberal with it i mean it's dripping everywhere right now but um just make sure you've got you've applied plenty and you've not put it on too. Now I've got a heavily textured piece, so there's there's no way that this is not going to come out with a bit of texture. So that's fine for me. And I'm just gonna pop that in here for my vase. And I'm just gonna carry it on. I want to make sure I've got plenty on like this. And I'm just going to go kind of right up it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't match. I'm just going to fold it up over because that's how I roll. Now, I do need to cut. This is the good thing about IOD stuff. It's got the little mark at the back. So I think I'm going with this line here. So I just need to pull this part back and just roughly cut 
that off. I'm just going to, because I've fiddled about with it, I'm just going to put a little bit more medium on there just to make sure that it, it's going to adhere. Now, once you've got it on like this, you can use a brayer just to make sure it's really stuck on there. I don't want to scrape too much of my finish. And then what you do is you just get a wet cloth or you can use a spray bottle, but um, I prefer the wet cloth, which would help if I had a wet cloth. I'm just going to get one. So I'm just putting some water on my cloth and all I'm doing now is making sure that I'm embedding that down onto my surface. And that's, that's how you apply onto a, a already painted surface. If you're doing it on glass and you want to apply it inlays on glass, you just use dishwasher uh, Mod Podge. You can do that and I have a video um for that it's um le chasse i think it is and it's with another video what i'm going to link it, <laughs> link it. oh technology see that's what happens I, I i'm not technical but martin i'll link it just so that you can have a look at that one of you if you want to apply an inlay onto glass inlays are great they're they're really versatile before i'd worked out how to do this i thought oh but you know i want different colors underneath but this is a great way of being able to use them right so this is our vase but what we're going to do with all these parts so because i was saying to you i wanted to have a sort of layered look i mean i don't know quite what i've been doing with this one i've obviously just wanted individual flowers so i'm just going to kind of cut um sort of how am I going to do this I'm going to have some of this coming down here I'll cut this part off there and we'll see and all I'm going to do is just get rid of that part as well actually and that part there I'm just going to start applying them in different places round about my piece that's all I'm going to do so some sections here some sections there so I'll put this one on quickly um, and then you can see what we do next. Plenty of medium on your brush, nice and thick. Don't be scrimping. Just think how what your layers of paint would be like if you were going to be using it as, an, as with paint. So plenty of this. And I'm just wanting to kind of situate this like this. I'm going to just nick across here like this because this is how I roll. And just so that I can push that into there like that into my medium doesn't matter if there's a wee wrinkle or two here i'm going to get my brayer and this is how i'm going to use up my parts i'm a bit concerned about this part here again with the wet cloth i'm wetting that on like that. I'm going to put some more up here so you kind of get the gist. I'm just kind of, I, I might put this piece of, yeah, I'll put this piece of paradise. It doesn't matter. I've cut the birds out obviously for another project. I'm not sure how far this is going to go on to the piece. So I'm just going to do this just now. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to, put it inside so I'm just going to do something like like this I wasn't quite sure of the size and <laughs> take that part off there we go and give it a wee rub I'm not sure what these will all really come out with, like on top of all these funky colours, but I'm just looking for a suggestion of something being there. So it's all a bit kind of trial and error right now. Um, this all came from me watching the journaling. I just wanted ways to use up all my scraps. I'm not going to be able to use any of these like parts like this on furniture. It's just not, I'm not going to be able to do it. Whereas if I take these and I disperse them through the piece so here's another piece here now i have to watch with my put my glasses on for this one because i once applied it the wrong way around yes i did do that so there 
So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just using up the pieces and parts as I go. And I'm just going to kind of go round the edges. I'm keeping this clear because this is where my flowers are going to go. And um, I'm just going to use what I've got up round the gauges and some on the sides. So I'm just going to remove these now with a damp cloth. So I'm just going to wet them. I've removed some. I've done down here where the, the vase is and I've done some other ones, but I'm just removing these ones now. The side ones are not dry yet or they're nearly dry, but not quite dry. So we'll crack on and get them all off the front so that we can do our next lot of layers. Um, so you just wet them to remove them, not saturate them, but just gently peel them off. Now you can get a second use out of these so even though they're little parts it's good to keep a hold of them. Um, so just like that. I'll do this one as well. So I'm just going to go on and I'm going to remove all the ones from the front so that we can and get on to showing you what I'm about to do next. I'm just kind of adding, see like I sort of kind of another layer on top of it. I put the indigo um, floral up here. And I'll get Martin to list everything that I've used in this in the description in case you're but I mean, it would mean you would have to have all pieces and parts of all of these. So I would suggest you probably just maybe use, whoops, not quite wet enough. Use some stamps. Or save this one up until you've got all these pieces. So gently, 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 gently pull this. It's a wee bit dry under here. The trick is to just make sure that it's, it's wet. Um, and it's just, it's just parts, you know, they're just, they're just parts that, um, I'm just using up, but they will give this like a whole new sort of, um, look. I'm trying my best to pull them off in a wanna because I want to be able to use them again. And if I rip them, they'll be in small, even smaller parts than they currently are. So, um, just gingerly pull them off. Don't worry if there's sort of marks here from where the um, the uh, the lacquer is because these will um, disappear when the whole thing is lacquered at the end. Just little parts. So I'll take these ones here off and then we'll get to making this look like flowers. Okay, so the next thing, we've pulled off all our inlays. The next thing, I got some, some tracing paper, the really, the tissue paper, the really, really thin stuff. Um, and I did this off camera earlier. And I got the peony stamp. I think there's some leaves in here from the sunflower stamp. There's a big chrysanthemum in here as well. Here. Now, the reason why I've done this is so that I can bend them as the vase goes up and then we'll kind of blend this in and we'll paint them. Well, we don't know quite now how we're going to paint them yet, but this is the way, but I want this to kind of touch over here, if you know what I mean, so that there's not this square space. So I think actually, to be honest with you, I think maybe the first one is maybe going to be this one. Mm. I don't want to rush it. Um, yeah, so all I'm going to do is, with the lacquer again, I'm just going to work out my sort of placement. You need quite a bit of lacquer to make them stick. You do not want these coming off your furniture, so make sure you apply plenty of lacquer. Try not to rub too much near your inlays though, because they will start to, to reactivate. So I'm looking for this to come here and this to come here. And then what you do is you get more lacquer because this is going to be easier to soak because I want the painting on top to be quite opaque and you want to try and blend it into what you have. So make sure you're going right over the top of it, smoothing down any wrinkles. Now there's a lot of texture on it underneath so you're going to get a little bit of wrinklage. 
So that's my first flower from my vase here. And I think I'm going to try and put one of the, the peonies maybe come in. I want it to kind of not hide too much of this out the vase this way. So this is going to be entertaining. So how I'd probably do this is I'd probably do something like cut up to there. Apply my lacquer. Making sure you apply plenty because you don't want it all coming off. This lacquer will be strong enough to hold this lightweight tissue. It's very lightweight, this tissue paper. Where did I have my cut? Here. I'm going to push that in there like this. I think probably I'm going to have to maybe do something like this. So there's going to be a wee bit of blending with this one. Put this underneath. Make sure I get this down into this corner. And then I can just piece that one back across. Don't worry if there's a little bit of kind of... Now this is going to be a little bit difficult to go too crazy with this because there is live inlays on underneath there. So that's my second one. And you can hopefully still see what I'm doing. This is just a kind of template to where all the flowers are going to go. I think my next one, I want a smaller one this time. I just stamped off, I stamped loads of them just so that I, you know, I had the kind of the right sort of amount. And I thought any left over I can pop round the sides. And if you don't use them all, you can put them um, back in your craft stash and use them on something else another day. I've got this one here. I want to put it here. So you can see I'm making them look like they're all overlapping, you know, they're... So I'm just going to go on and I'm glue, going to glue these all down in a position that I like and then we'll get to painting these in next. So in here I have um, some varnish and some yellow and I've added a little bit of white paint and I'm just adding some varnish to this because I don't have any glaze so I'm hoping that this does the same sort of thing and I can rub it around with my finger so I'm gonna start up here with this chrysanthemum now I'm just doing a hint of where I want it to be um, I think obviously the peonies are easier I've done one they are um, easier to paint and I'm not particularly like, I'm not painting it all in I'm just kind of going I was watching those people with the scrapbooking last night <laughs> watching last night and watched how they kind of got the suggestion of things so um, every day is a school day I'm just kind of like giving it so that you can still see you still want to see the, the lines underneath where we printed it out and if you if you can't see it just give it a wee rub because the varnish should allow us to do this to be able to see what's going on underneath um, I'm going to put this yellow up around here but I want to kind of start darkening it up now and making it more of a sort of orange so let's kind of like bring some of this into here and I mean of course you can actually just if you want it a little bit darker in some of these you can actually just dip your brush in the yellow itself for darker tones you know like to bring you know like but just as long as you can still move it because um, that's what we, we, we still need to be able to move this round and round just blend that around there any parts where our paper is I want you to go right to the edge and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you there what I've done on this leaf I was just trying it out. I went right to the edge of the leaf and we'll sketch round this at the end to make it look really sort of kind of modern arty. But at the moment, we're just kind of, at the moment, we're just putting down our colour. And again, all I can say is stick with this because it, it is going places. I can see it is. It's just, it's just quite a, it's quite, quite a lengthy process, this, but um, got a wee bit of pink there. So what that, what that does for us. So that like that and I think that's probably I need to do some up here around here so you can see what I'm doing I'm just making sure that that this live paper edge is kind of covered it can be a little bit of a, like a tone we'll just see there's a part in there that hasn't been painted and what we can do to there is we can add a little bit of our green and we can bring our green up here beside our leaf and that makes a little bit more sense around here like that 
right so I'll just show you on this leaf it's the same I put the green in the varnish and this is how I kind of started it I sort of rubbed it around so you could still see it um, took it right to my edges decided I want a little bit of yellower sort of lighter tones just have to make sure that I don't break this tissue paper because it is very fine and obviously I'm bringing the green again right to the edges here and it should start to have a kind of real painterly feel about it well that's the hope put some green up in amongst there so I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the whole lot because you know what you're doing now and um, we'll see how it all looks once I've done this so while all the flowers are drying, because I painted those all in, I'm just getting a white pen to do the vase. Now, I'm not looking for a straight line on the vase. I'm looking for a scribbly line because that's the kind of look I'm looking for. So I'm going to do something like this, which just gives that sort of appearance. I'm going to put something down here. Now, I tried. I've got some little, um, these are Tim Holt stamps. They're for um, small crafts. I tried them in the blue and it didn't really work so I've got some white paint on a brier and let's see if we can um this might not work we might be horrified by this but we'll see uh, I want to put some other texture in this so I'm thinking maybe here with like all stamps you just need to push these down these ones are a little bit finer they're not really meant for things with a whole load of texture but we'll we'll see how we go with this we'll see if I prefer it in the white yeah yeah I quite like that I'm just going to load it up again um, like this and maybe do up where I'd done it before I'm sort of kind of I'll just kind of offset it from where I did it before and stick it on there I'm going to do some more of this sort of here and there sort of stamping as well I need to try and work out what I'm going to do here because that was all the inlay I had and it looks like it's kind of, you know, just kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. So I think what I'll do is there's a smaller one of these Tim Hole stamps. I'll just give this a little, you shouldn't do this on your knee. Um, uh, this is the bad way I'm showing you that you should do it on a flat surface. I wasn't expecting Martin to pan down. <laughs> oh. I'm not wanting it on there yeah that kind of gives that some sort of and then there's this part here that I want to try and sort of fill in with something so we'll turn it around this way it's just to kind of make it look like it's all one and right now it just kind of looks a little bit yeah I think that's probably now on the bottom part here I told you it was going to be a whole load of using up pieces and parts I came across this in my stash so I'm going to put this here it just happened to be cut out this way so um, this is quite a good day uh, for to find I have loads of other pieces of transfers um, but this this here seems to it's a work quite nicely on here like this now I don't have a transfer stick it was just to show you where I was putting it so I'm going to put this here I'm just building as you can see I'm just building lots of layers over the top of the layers I'm going to try and find some other transfer to come out here but um, as far as this sort of section is getting there, I think that this line, this white line, has to be a little bit more thicker and a little bit more scribbly um, because it, it's got to kind of stand up beside everything else and right now it's a little bit kind of weedy looking. I am going to go around here but the rest are wet but when I do go around it I'm going to just going to be really quite loose and just outline everything like this. I don't want to go up too far where it's not dry so like that and let's see this part's not dry but when it dries we're going to go around all this as well and quite scribbly like kind of double lines like this just to give it that sort of arty look that's what we'll be doing when that part's dry I'll put this transfer on and I'll go around and do a few more of these Tim Holtz stamps on the front and on the sides and then, um, oh, here's a leaf here we can go around. I think it's dry. This one's dry. Just so you kind of see what I'm doing. 
So I'm going right, right out from where we were, like this. I think I'll just do that there as well. There's a flower down here, but I won't be able to do much with it right now because there's a transfer that I've just stuck on the front. But yeah, we'll get to this. So you can see it's a more a sort of scribbly style I'm going for, as opposed to, you know, lining it all out nice and tidy. Yeah. So I really am just, I've, I've gone round all this in white and it's all nice and shiny because the varnish was in the, in the glaze I made. Um, I've gone to label ephemera of the really old retired stamp and I found this part here. So I'm just gonna, I've already put some words off another piece. I think this is off Ode to Hen, Henry Fletcher, these little pieces and parts and words, they might not be, um, but anything with words or you could, if you have the twill stamp, which I'm going to get out shortly. You could do some lettering with just a little, or the kindest regards, kindest regards stamp I don't have. No, I don't have it. Um, because I, I just don't, but if you're looking for, and you do have the 12, there's a little bit of lettering that sometimes I use in there for it. And I'll show you that when I go and get it out of the drawer. So I'm just going to rub this on. I've got other parts here of label ephemera. Although, however, I just dropped that in the paint. <laughs> I've had to clean it because it was one that came in a roll the backings came off it and the paint is all wet on the front so I'm not going to actually show you <laughs> me applying that but it'll be somewhere down the bottom here now on a quick note when I put the transfer down the bottom the glaze must have made this very vulnerable and it pulled off the paint but you know me I'm quite enjoying that so I'm not worried about it I'll just build it up with other things so it's starting to get quite busy it's starting to have that layered look that I'm looking for I'm sure I can probably do more, but right now, I think it's this this sort of look is getting rid of all the pieces that are, I mean, that's no good to anyone. It doesn't even, I don't know what I took out of there. So, you know, I think it's a good way of using up all these little parts to make something really good. And that's by building up the layers. So I'm just going to keep on making some layers and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so there was a problem. Every time I stood back, this was too big. There was no stems to balance this out. So I brought this down. I couldn't quite recreate everything that was round about it, but I darkened it out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, now I will create the back of the vase in a minute, but let's create the front first. So let's see that that's the front. We'll get rid of this line in a minute. And what I've got is, I've got a whole bunch of these in my stash. I've obviously used the flower heads but never used any of these stems. I'm trying to think what these, that looks like painterly florals and this looks like, Le I'm not quite sure what that one is, but I think these are both painterly florals. So we say that the, 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 the branches out of painterly florals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these stems and place them up on here to make them look like stems. Now I did have my transfer stick. Um, but I don't have my scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just, I'm just going to do that. Um, I'll maybe do one if I can grab my scissors. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that it is lifting a little bit and I'm thinking maybe I should put a little bit of heat from a heat gun on it before I try anything else. I'll do that first and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm just kind of slicing and dicing these, uh, these stems because I really do think this will make much more sense. I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place, but sometimes this is why I'm always, well, oh, I keep scratching through the wood. It's a good job I'm going to kind of chip it up at the end. This is why you should always stand back from your work because that's when you realize that it's not quite right. Um, that's when you realize that, you know, there's something off about it. God, it's pulling the paint off left, right and center. Now, it's a good job I'm kind of looking for this sort of look and I have kind of just tried, where did I try it? I, up there, I took some paint off up the top um, to see what it was going to look like. So I'm quite happy. I'm just going to kind of get a, I'll probably end up just getting a palette knife and um, kind of scratching some of it away. So I really want to kind of go like up this way. So I'm just going to go something like there. Um, and I'll put some leaves and things on this as I go. And I, I think I've probably got enough to maybe make it look quite realistic. I'm just going to layer them over the top of each other um, so that um, 
there's there's like a kind of whole lot of them and if I don't have enough I'll just get a pen and I'll just put them on draw them in I mean there's other ways you could do if you don't have these what I was thinking of doing is you could get a paintbrush with some wet ink on it and hold it there really wet and then push it down and let your drips run down as stems and you could let it run down on your your vase that was my sort of that was my intention until I saw I had all these and what am I ever going to use these for so I may as well use them on something so there we go god I'm doing everything wrong now I'm not worried about any of these sort of kind of little I mean if this this is the kind of look I'm looking for but um, if you want perfect take your time I've still got some of these leaves that I can fit in and things because I have a whole kind of like I've got loads of these I want and I'll take this just straight one off here so I'll just do something like that to get this one so you understand what I'm doing now I'm just creating it to make it look like um there's loads of stems coming up from the from the roses. I'll do something like that one there. Put that one in there, and uh, that'll make it. When I step back, it makes it look much more. What well, it was because the it was because it was the height, and it didn't. So, and we obviously need to do the back of the vase, but we can get to that. I'm just was wanting to show you what I was doing. The rest is coming on really well. I've put some um, entomology butterflies um, I've put some cake signs from um, uh, oh, I'm gonna have to get Martin to um, write all these down I've had brain freeze the one with the, the French lady in the Martin can you help me do can you remember what it is? No, I don't know. Ah, Brocant. Brocant. it's from the Brocant. Um, so I've just really kind of anything that I've had left over, I keep. I never get rid of anything. I keep everything I'll right, right down to things like this. I would never bin it. I keep it so that I can put it into, um, like if I'm doing a project. And the thing is, after a little while, because I've done a project before and it was all transfers. After a little while, you can do a whole project with them. If you kind of do a little bit of head scratching of how you were going to do this, but this was more putting on your little using up all your little bits of inlay and then putting everything on top I'll of it yeah martin will drop you a link for the video where i get a whole load of um, iod transfers that were no good for a piece of furniture not big enough and how i made a piece of furniture out of it so um there is that out there so i'm just going to get on and do finish this part and um, we'll see where we're going after that so I'm just putting this relief outliner um, in this little sort of uh, join. I'm not doing it where the decoupage paper goes over, but I'd already done to there. So it was just to show you that that's what I was doing. Now off camera, I did what I said I was going to do. I put all the pieces and parts and transfers and what I'll get, I'll actually, instead of looking at it right now, we'll, we'll have a real breakdown of it once I kind of get the last few parts finished. Now I did talk about this. This is the stamp from uh, the Rose Toile stamp. Um, the words from that, and I'm as I said, I've done the front pretty similar. The sides have got the same. They've got a flower, and I'm going to show you all the sides as well. But if you just stick and use the front as your guide, you just replicate a bit, a bit some of the parts on the sides. There's there's nothing different. The main focus is on the front, but the sides have got a couple of flowers, and I'll show you all them in a minute. I've shown you everything, the, the, the layering, the um, inlays, the transfers, the tissue paper, um, peonies and chrysanthemums. I've stuck some transfers over. Now this piece is actually, it looks shiny because it's actually been sealed. The reason why I sealed it was I was getting anxious about these. Um, so I've sealed everything in right now. It's all sealed, but we can still use our stays on ink on top of things if we want to do a bit of stamping. But the last thing I've got here is I've actually got some. It's ro I, I, I wasn't quite sure what to um, what color to use, whether to go with gold or green. This just needs a good start. It's um, gilded acrylic and it's a pinky sort of color. It's this color here. Um, and what I'm going to do with it is is now in my infinite wisdom a couple of minutes ago I took a cloth away I was just stirring it round 
So it's a kind of, it's rose gold, but it's a, it's kind of quite coppery as well. It's got a pinky sort of coppery sort of tone. And what I'm going to do with it is, I'll just kind of clean my brush here off, off camera. I've got quite a, it's not quite a toothbrush, but it is quite rough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it in my paint and I'm going to do some splatters if I can. Of just this pink, it's going to need quite a bit of. It's just to kind of finish it off. And what I'm going to do with what's on my brush is I'm just going to do this, just so you can see where the handle is. Um, just give it a little bit of interest here on my handle. Now. Off camera, I've painted the inside of my shelf, so they can go back in in a minute. But we're pretty much done. I'm going to highlight, if I go up the top here, I'm just going to run this pink just over this detail here because it's a wee bit kind of lost at the moment. So just... I don't want to go crazy with this. I mean, I don't, so probably that's enough. I'm going to stop at that. But while we're on my feet, I'll show you a part of what I'm going to do. Not everywhere, just some places. It helps if I use the right side of the stamp pad. Um, with this sort of wording, um, I'm just going to put some. I quite like it over the flowers, so maybe a bit here. And some maybe here. So I'm just kind of holding, I'm not holding it flat so the whole thing goes on. I'm just kind of touching it like that, just to kind of give it some letters. And I'm going to do that on the sides as well, so you can see where I've done it on that leaf. And we could do a wee bit on the butterfly here, there. So I'm just going to do some of this, just to break up the kind of parts. And um, then we are nearly at the reveal. Um, I've changed my brush because the other one wasn't giving me my the splatter that I was looking for. I think it's because it's so such a thick medium that I'm trying to get to splatter. I mean, I'm not going crazy with it, it's just here and there. Oh, that's a good one. So, I'm going to stage this out and we'll get to looking at it in detail I'll run through the whole piece I think for this one so it's finished I'm just going to get bring you in close so you can see all the detail and all the texture that I've created the underneath layers were all of the different layers of the Annie Sloan chalk paint that I then spattered with watered down um, self leveling self sealing paint and then I stenciled, you can see here, some of the parts of the stencil. It's all about the layers. So I've got the bird, it's from the entomology, the leaves from painterly florals, the tissue paper flowers, which play more role when we get down a bit. We've got the um, inlays here. We've got the bohemian floral inlay there, inlays here. Um, this is from the brocant transfer this one here the leaves are and the, all of the flowers were all printed onto tissue paper first then I added a little bit of a uh, varnish to my paint so that my paint was more opaque so that I didn't lose the detail by a plot I'll, I'll give you the, my reasoning for putting them on tissue paper if I just stamped onto the furniture I would have lost all the color and everything that we created underneath and I wanted some of that still to pop through so that's the reason for the tissue paper and the fact that I could fold it around any joins and I knew that when taking them out that this was going to have a join here so I could bend things around. Um, I used various different, these, all the flowers were painted with Guild Lane paint with a little bit of varnish in them just to make them more opaque. The butterfly is from the entomology and what I've done throughout is I've found bits of words that I had in my stash and I've put them across the flowers thinking back to the original sort of inspo which was the journaling um because those women know how to put texture on i've layered and layered and layered and layered and i could go on but i think it's got enough now 
so some words there the, the French stamp is over this one that butterfly is entomology as well so moving down we've got the oh my brain's fried it's the I'll get I've already written this list out this morning of everything I've used but I've forgotten the name of this it's an inlay um, it might come to me as we go around the bumblebees from the entomology which is retired but you'll get a lovely big bumblebee on the Bracant transfer I've been saving this for ages and I wasn't even going to put it on but at the very end my daughter came over Daisy and she was saying just put it on so it's on there now the words and lettering came from the label ephemera it's another retired one but there's a new label ephemera or label I haven't got it myself IOD transfer it's got lots of words that you could cut up and do that and the Bacant transfer has quite a lot of words which is another kind of go to or you could just use stamps you don't have to have all of this um, everything that I've done here could be done just purely with stamps really I've got the paradise inlay coming down on this dark panel it looks really nice on this dark blue so I think I get inspo from my own things of colours that work together so that look out for something similar to this because I like this moving down more leaves tissue paper uh, this is where we kind of went a bit wrong because I've done my uh, vase too high so I then got the stems from the painterly florals and I think it's Le Redoute too but I will check my facts on some of the stems that's tissue paper and obviously I've just highlighted it I have used a um, acrylic chalk paint pen to scribble round the edges this was the very look that I was getting this scribbly any blank negative spaces I've just done a scribble in them just to kind of fill it out the white lets the eye settle when there's so much going on a little bit of white kind of lets the eye rest and so the white that's the reason for the white and I didn't go around it with a darker colour more of this one which is so frustrating that I can't remember because I, rem I, I told you at the time which what, what it was called and it's just I've forgotten it but it's there entomology some more of the label ephemera paradise inlays moving down to oops a bit there that's not very good I'm gonna to have to go back and put a bit more sealer on here this chips I've kept them all in I love them I've chipped it on purpose and I've gone round with uh, I was actually a screwdriver and I've taken the paint back off fish is from the uh, entomology and all this writing was from the first retired uh, label ephemera leaves and things again from the painterly florals stamps this is a Tim Holtz stamp this is an IOD stamp from the um, folk art set Tim Holtz label um, entomology <laughs> I'm back to this white one again that his name is escaping me more inlays more tissue paper this is from the Bacant and you can see at this point the, la the, 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 the layers that I've created the stamping underneath the layers the colours that I started with they all sit in the background now with the flowers being the main event so I'm just going to get to a different camera angle which means that I'm going to try and let Martin get up off his knees so that we can do the sides and I'll do one side and then I'll do the other side the sides are not as crazy um, all of that detail is still there you can really see the stencils on the side they play a much larger role in the front because I don't have all the artwork on, on, on this so up the top we have all of the chalk paint in with the pieces of the white one that I can't remember the name of and this was a self leveling that was put over the chalk paint and remember we rolled it on lots of splatters and splashes the whites from the spray gun inlays pink splatters of the rose gold which you just saw me do it pulled the paint off here and I absolutely loved that so I kept it if things like this happen unless you're going for a pure polished look if it's a sort of bohemian layered look run with it. it enjoy it it's an extra special thing it's a little bit of joy it's a happy accident as Bob Ross would say so I like that kind of thing this is from the Bella stamp this one here Bella stamp there this was an Indian stamp that I got off 
Amazon, I'll get Matt to drop the link. I've used it a couple of times. I used it on the how to, you know, paint a piece of furniture in the recession. That was the one, one of the ones I used there. We birdie here from the, um, I'm getting more and more, my head's getting, it's getting a bit muddled though. This is from the entomology and I just extended the branch out with my white. More, I mean, look at the layers on here. The layers on here, I just love. There's the rollered part with the self-leveling guild lane paint. You can see the pink chalk paint. You can see the Abusum blue. You can see the blend together. You can see the white splashes. You can see the inlay. And applying inlays with lacquer means that you don't lose any of your fine finish. I wouldn't say this was a fine finish, but any of your, your layers behind if you do that. I've tried my best to put as much lettering as I can over my flowers. The flowers just in the same way. It's tissue paper. You can't tell. It's the leaves are from the painted leaf florals. You can see my line of my stenciling. Um, the moth lost its part of its tail, but I was enjoying that. Paradise inlays, more texture, more heavily white spray here. Bella stamp, the rollered blue. Bella stamp, some lavender, and really quite distressed feet. So we'll get up off our knees and we'll show you the other side. The texture really comes into play on this side as well. You can, I mean, you can actually feel it. It's so yummy. All those splashes that I did with the green and the pink spray bottle on top of the Capri Pink from Annie Sloan, Guild Lane, um, Real Blue over the top of this, Paradise Inlays, Stencil, Bohemian, um, the blue, the blue transfer, <laughs> no, the blue inlay. Lettering from the, there's another little part there, I'm going to have to go back over this and just give it another varnish because that, you don't want to be sending furniture out like that. I must have missed it. I was talking to my daughter at the time, maybe wasn't concentrating. This is from the label Ephemera. Pink splashes, the rose gold splashes you know about, butterfly, stamping, Bella stamp, tissue paper, um, the words from the rose toile stamp, paradise inlays, more splashes of the pink, more real blue, more of the stenciling, more tissue paper flowers, more butterflies from the... Um, entomology transvent now this is really funny you can't see this on camera but martin and i are both in a tiny little space and we're trying to get on our knees um i drew in the leaves here because i can a uh, paradise inlay more transfers inlays at the bottom and that clock is from the bacant i wish i could remember this one it's seriously bugging me. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the camera and find out what it is, and then I'll come back and I'll I'll tell you in my clothes what it is actually called. But that's it. I'll show you the inside of the big reveal. So I've staged it all out. Um, I, I just need to show you the inside. Oh, I need to move my chair. <laughs> How cute is that? I'm enjoying that greatly. Do you know how often I want to use those rabbits, but I have no idea what to do with them? Today they're all inside a wardrobe. Who has that amount of rabbits? I just do. I think I've got about 15 of them. They were on sale, so I bought them all. <laughs> anyway, the rabbits are in the cupboard right now. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, the reasoning behind all this was to use up I had so many silly pieces of inlay that was not enough to do one piece of furniture. And I thought of doing something like a patchwork quilt. I mean, maybe that's something to think about. But I kind of went, oh, I went off the idea and I had some Annie Sloan that was getting quite thick and I wanted to use that. And it came from necessity to try and get rid of these pieces. Uh, I have inlays stored all over the place. Some in the studio, some in my other studio, some in my other studio, because I, ha I have three. One of them's a utility room that I don't want to sound posh. Um, so I have all this stuff that I, I, I needed to get rid of some of it and not enough to do a piece of furniture. So then I started down the rabbit hole of journaling. Uh, people who do, they, my heart goes off to those women. They know how to put texture on. If you're interested in looking at texture, go and have a look at people who journal. They just lay it up and lay it up and lay it up and lay it up. In fact, they lay it so much you can't see what's underneath it, but I think they just like layering. 
And that was the look I was going for. The tissue paper, I wanted that as I've already explained so you can see the colours that I put on underneath and it's a really good idea and I will revisit this for another project, I'm sure at some point. It used up loads of bits and pieces that I was ever probably never going to use. I mean, I could never think of a reason where, where that fish was going to go from the entomology. I have the frog as well. I mean, I was thinking of putting the frog on it, but I, I'll keep the frog. The butterflies and everything, there's only so many projects you can put butterflies on. And if you can, this was the project to put it on. Um, that's really it. Um, I've went back and I've fixed that little piece there and the piece around the corner that was a little bit loose. And I've remembered the name. Oh no, I've forgotten the name. Martin, what is it? Giselle. It's called, we think it's Giselle or Gazelle. We're not sure, Twal. Um, well, that's the one you're looking for. It's the one with the sort of a uh, bird and I oh, think a parrot or maybe it's a lima. I don't know. There's, there's a, I, I have used that one in the past, hence the reason why, but I've only ever really used it once. But can I just say, when I put it on, that really dark real blue, look out for something with that because I really like that colour combination. I picked another com colour combination out of this piece as well that I liked. I liked the Paradise inlays on this blue as well. So maybe there's a, a workaround for, for both of those in the future. Maybe even somebody asked me for a commission, I might try it. So I've done an awful lot of talking. Uh, I've been Lel from Made by Marley. If you like it, leave me a comment, press the like button, give me the thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you to everybody again who has subscribed to our channel. It's, it's going places. Um, people keep coming back to watch me do the craziest furniture imaginable. Um, and I'm really grateful that you do. I know it's not for everyone, but all I'll say is this. Anything I do, even if you take away pieces and parts of what I've told you, because this could all have been done in muted colours. You could have done all this as in peaches and pinks and like greys and whites. It doesn't have to be so bold. You could have done it all in pale colours. So there's no reason why if you're a little bit scared of colour and you don't want to dive in or you think your market can't take it, there's no reason why you can't take what I've done and just adapt it. Adapt it to your market if you're selling furniture or to your home if you're just making, following me, just or maybe you're just following me for the lols, I don't know. Anyway, um, that's it for this week. I've got some really good stuff coming up and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.